Ladies and gentlemen, here we go for another Attack on Titan review. This one specifically going over season two and things are gonna pick up a little bit more compared to last time. But speaking of last time, the previous season one video did not do as good as we thought. So if you missed it, it'll be linked at the top corner up here. And if you wanna see these seasons reviewed quicker, show some love to this video. But anyway, we have plenty to talk about for season two, so let's go ahead and get started. Now to do a quick recap from last season, there's a couple things we need to remember. First and foremost, our characters live in a world where there's man-eating titans. We do not currently know what these titans are. However, there are certain people that are able to transform into a titan. Our first character is Aaron Yeager, who seems to not know how he can transform. However, he's able to make a wish, bite his fingers, and he's able to transform into a titan. The big shocker is another character that was a part of the cadets named Annie Leonhart. Multiple suspicious things popped up around this character, such as not turning in her own ODM gear, and also not having the birth records and details of where she came from. Eventually, we find out that she is a traitor and is also able to turn into a Titan. After a huge fight between Aaron and Annie, the scene ends with Annie putting herself in a crystal. With this method, she is not able to be questioned or even eaten by Aaron himself. But during this time, we also find out a shocking reveal that there are Titans within the walls. So that's a general synopsis of what happened in season one at the critical moments. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into season two. When it comes to the beginning of season two, our characters are recovering from the aftermath of the Annie incident. Some characters got banged up because they were part of the fight, so they have to recover respectively. Other characters were not around during the incident, so we have to hold them captive. The military starts to realize that anyone can be a traitor if Annie was one. And so it's better to have some of the younger people captive just in case. We see some of those characters such as Connie, Sasha, Berto, and Reiner all captive. And basically during this time, they just don't have their ODM gear and horses. So it's not like they're chained up getting tortured, right? But also during this time, we meet our first obstacle. Our favorite potato girl, Sasha, has her hand on the desk and suddenly can start hearing things. We're shown before that Sasha is a hunter. And because of this, her natural senses are more keen than other people. So during this moment, she realizes that she is hearing something coming. And we're also shown from another character's point of view that he can smell something. This character is known as Mike or Mish or whatever you want to call him. With his good sense of smell, he starts to smell a lot of titans coming their way. Now most people, including myself, don't want to know what titans smell like, so he decides to investigate by himself. And lord behold, when he gets there, there are for sure titans around, including a titan he's never seen before. But this titan seems to be vastly different compared to others. The body shape of this titan is very top heavy, and he also looks like a monkey. But trust me, that's not the only thing that shocks Mike when he sees this titan. You see, this titan is actually able to speak. So far, we've never seen a Titan able to speak, including the Titan Shifters. So why can he suddenly speak, and on top of that, he can make other Titans do what he wants? It's like basically telling a dog to sit. After one of the Titans grabs onto Mike, he tells him not to eat him quite yet. But because Mike doesn't give this new Titan the information he wants, he's able to tell the other Titans to kill Mike. And as soon as you see him enter the story, he's also out at the same speed. But as a viewer, this tells us something very important that there's other special Titans titans around. But because of these titans walking around freely, it's best to move these cadets that were not a part of the fight to somewhere else. And also to save the horses because they are very important. During this time, we see several members of our main cast moving to a different location. And it just so happens that they stop by Connie's hometown. Now Connie, he did leave his hometown to hopefully have a better life within the walls. But for some reason, when they get back, everyone is gone. Plus, there's a random titan that's alive laying on top of his house. It makes you wonder what could have happened to his village, but for the sake of staying alive, we have to go. So the group decides to occupy this castle looking building for the nighttime. And luckily we get a lot of new dialogue from characters that we've not seen before. Two other characters that also join the group are Historia and Ymir. Ymir decides to search the location to see what else they can find inside the building. Maybe you can find some perishables or blankets. But during this time, she has a pretty nice conversation with Reiner. I mean, both of these characters are probably never going to have a time to have a conversation anyway, so it's good to happen here. And that being said, Ymir happens to find a can with some weird writing on it. And of course, you're not supposed to be able to read this. I mean, we can't either. But for some reason, during this scene, Reiner was able to read it. But this whole conversation as to why he could read it is quickly ended, because the titans that are lurking outside are now getting active. Some of the older soldiers are doing their best to hold them 
off, but there's just too many. And we even see one get inside the building. Luckily, Berto and Reiner are big boys and they can fight on their own. Only thing is, Reiner did get a itty bitty scratch, but it's okay, Historia can heal him up. But unfortunately, this situation becomes a little bit too scary. So it's time to move on top of the building and just watch your comrades die. I mean, what else can you do? You don't have your ODM gear, nor can you get on the horses to leave. So at this moment, you have a dire need for something to happen. And luckily enough, Ymir is that person to make something happen. We're shown through a flashback that Ymir and Historia are hiding something. On Historia's side, we find out that she is the bass poop child of a royal family, meaning she's been hiding who she truly is throughout this whole story. She also was going by another alias named Krista, but I didn't want to call her that, it's just confusing. So she decided to hide within the cadets and hopefully she would get killed off. And no, those are not my words, those are specifically from Historia and Ymir. She never actually wanted to try to restore humanity, instead she wanted to be killed off in an accident so that way nobody would have to worry about her plus she would be considered dying heroically and while that is a good sentiment it was kind of selfish when you think of it but Ymir's secret is much bigger than Historia's back to our current timeline Ymir shows that she is actually a titan she has used this titan form before and while Historia was around she never figured it out but now that we know that she is a titan this means she is the third titan shifter we've seen but this also means that Ymir is a traitor of among society. It's crazy when you think about it because while she did choose to save her comrades, it doesn't matter. She will be tied up and held captive just like Annie was. But for the moment, at least she does her job protecting her friends the best she can. While Ymir does her best to stop the Titan from eating her friends, she still takes a lot of damage. Overall, she's trying to defend off a few dozen of Titans and she can't do it herself. As you can see, while she is a Titan, she's also a very small Titan compared to Eren and Annie. So overall, she does kind of catch an L in this fight. But luckily enough, some other soldiers show up at the end of the fight to help her finish it off. But that being said, we don't know if she's going to be alive after this and also they have to restrain her because she is a traitor. But as our characters find out what happened during this revelation, we decide to reflect on top of a wall. This way, other titans cannot climb the wall and it's safer to be up there and recuperate. And just as we have a huge shocking event, it's time for another one. During this next scene, we see Eren help Reiner get on top of the wall. Of course, right now, Reiner has an injured arm because he got hurt from before. But suddenly, out of nowhere, Reiner decides to ask Eren a crazy question. It's probably better for you to hear it than me telling it to you. Five years ago, we compromised Walmaria and launched an attack on humanity. Entry point hard to find. I'm the armored titan. He's the colossal. Just in case you didn't hear what he said, I'll say it for you. Reiner told Eren to his face that he is the armor and Berto is the colossal. The same two titans that destroyed the walls years ago. And from our point of view, the same titans that started off the series. Now the good news is Mikasa doesn't have to have any convincing and she gets in the mix instantly. However, she was unfortunately unsuccessful to kill both Berto and Reiner. And because both of these characters now took an injury, they're now able to transform. This now leads into a huge fight with Berto and Reiner versus is Aaron and the other scouts. Now I'll just let this fight stay in the background because I also want to explain some other things that were shown before. There are a couple of hints as a viewer that Berto and Reiner are titans. The first one we talked about earlier because Reiner was able to read a can. This can was clearly not in the same language as what we're seeing throughout the series but for some reason Reiner was able to read it with no issue and plus Ymir could not read it but she is also a titan shifter. This tells us that Berto and Reiner are bilingual and also means that they're from another area compared to the rest of the cast. Another example is when Ymir transformed, Berto and Reiner seem kind of upset. It's one thing to be shocked, that makes sense, but it's another thing to start having flashbacks as well as about to bite your arm at any moment. I'm sure there's many other signs that could point towards these two being titans, but for the sake of time, this was foreshadowed for a long time in the series. And now with no dire need, both Berto and Reiner have explained that they are the ones that attack the walls. While this fight drags on, we found out two interesting facts about both Titans. When it comes to the armored Titan, he wears a metal plate to protect his body. However, not only that metal plate has openings within his joints, the metal plate makes it very hard for him to be flexible. On the other hand, Berto's Titan takes longer to create, and because of its large size, it can barely move. But these Titans are still very strong and have other secrets that we'll find out about later. So 
overall, during the end of the fight scene, both Ymir and Eren are captured by both Berto and Reiner. While the rest of our soldiers have to sit around and wait for help, we get to find out more information through our captives' conversations. Now, while this is never explained exactly, we find out something new about Reiner. During their conversation, he talks about how he expects to get a promotion after the deeds are done. And I'm talking about a promotion as a soldier. But it seems throughout some more prying, we find out that Reiner seems to have a multi-personality disorder. There's the Reiner that believes he's actually a soldier for Eldians. However, there's also a Reiner that believes he's a warrior from somewhere else. It seems that Berto is aware of these internal struggles that Reiner has. While it is very helpful that we got this information from Ymir, Eren was trying to hear none of that. Matter of fact, they had to continue to cut off his body parts to make sure he won't transform. But alas, we find out their goal seems to be to capture Eren for some reason. The most we know is these two characters want to take him back to their hometown. And at first, Ymir decides to help them if they can give her one wish. And you can assume what that wish is, it's to see Historia again. To make sure no matter what, that she will not be harmed. So now we're entering the last big altercation for the series. Reiner's Titan has recovered and he's doing his best to run away with the captives. And of course our soldiers are doing their best to not only stop the traitors, but also get back Eren. And there's also some mindless Titans running around trying to catch them all. But during this high speed chase, we have a scene where our main cast are talking to Berto, asking him questions such as, was their friendship fake? And did he really mean all the things he would say to them honestly? And with the reply we get back from Berto, he does tell us he was being completely honest. But there's just something else going on that he can't really explain. So it's good to know that these characters seem to be genuine, but there's something else we don't know about. But after a couple more minutes when some soldiers die, we get to the main finale. The team was able to rescue Eren, however, they can't just run away freely. Reiner and Berto are both on pursuit, and there's just too many mindless titans around to overcome them all. And to make matters worse, during a scene where Eren and Mikasa are basically done for, it just so happens that the smiling titan has returned. If by chance you don't remember the smiling titan, this is the titan that ate Eren's mom. Ironic, isn't it? But luckily enough, Hannes is here to save the day. And by save the day, I mean he gets battered pretty quickly. But on the real, Hannes is still a hero because he wanted to do what he couldn't do before. And unfortunately, he still couldn't save the kids, but at least he tried. So after Eren's breakdown, there's one final thing they can try. And I'm talking about scream, punch the Titan, and see what happens. But as soon as Eren is able to punch the smiling Titan, we see a lightning spark go through the other shifters. And after that, the Titan that was stalking Eren and Mikasa suddenly attacks the smiling Titan. And not only that Titan, but every other Titan shift their gaze to go specifically for the smiling Titan. It seems that Eren was somehow able to control the mindless Titans and make them do what he wants. But of course, you want to take advantage of the opportunity that you get. Eren does his best to carry Mikasa to safe but Reiner is able to locate him running away. As soon as Reiner was about to go after Eren, Eren screams back at him. After threatening his life, the Titans that were at once killing the Smiling Titan go for Reiner instead. So this is a pretty safe bet that Eren now has the ability to control Titans. So because of this, Reiner and Berto now have to retreat. But there's just too many Titans for them to take on, so Ymir has to make a decision. And now at this point, it's probably safe to talk about some lore and backstory. Now that we're at this point, I want to explain the history that we see with Ymir. Have you ever noticed that Ymir has a darker skin tone compared to other people? It seems that Ymir is not the same race compared to people that we're used to. And during a flashback, we're seeing that Ymir was once upheld as a queen. She was giving a luxurious life because of this. However, her people eventually went against her. Now, she was so young at the time, she really couldn't understand what was going on. However, when she was pushed away from her own people, they turned her into a mindless titan. Once she was turned into a mindless titan, she decided to hide for years. It's very similar to a bear hibernating. After some time passed, it seems that some characters that we know were walking by. Two of those people, of course, are Berto and Reiner, but another character that was with them was named Marcel. Marcel saved Reiner from being eaten by Ymir. However, Marcel was eaten by Ymir and she ran off. Once she came to, she suddenly turned back to her human form. And this leads to her decision as to why she decided to help Berto and Reiner. 
she specifically says, consider me a constellation prize. She knows back then that she took a friend from them and she wants to return something to them. And the best thing she can give back is the Titan shifter that she is today. And past that, there's only one more thing we have to talk about. During an ending scene, we see some of the higher ranked soldiers talking to one another. And it just so happens that Connie has a big brain. Connie noticed that there's a similarity between the people of his original village and the Titans that they saw. And because of that, he makes a huge assumption that Titans are actually people. Now we're going to jump into this in season three, so I don't want to talk about it too much. But overall, season two ends with Erwin realizing that he made a step in humanity. And that's it. That's Attack on Titan season two recap. And with that, I appreciate you guys for watching. This bad boy took some time, but I have some time for you if you have some time for me. In other words, if you show this video some love, I'll be able to push out the other three quicker. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I appreciate all the Patreon members. If you want to take your love to to Patreon, check it out down below. Thank you all for watching and take care.